Well, we're picking up where we left off. This is part three of building the turntable. Oh, dear. Yes. <laughs> what a massive project. Oh, no kidding. Which is why we're on part three, and we've hardly scratched the surface, really. Oh, gee, yeah. Well, I shouldn't say that. We're, we're getting her done. Yeah. It's coming together. It's, it's a slow process. But when you look at the way uh, the prototype turntable here is constructed, it's no mean feat to put one of these things together. I have just not been able to even get an idea how you're going to do this. Uh, and it's, I've always, you know, in the past, if I've done a turntable, I've used a kit because then you just build the kit. But when you're building the whole thing from scratch this way, then you have to do your own engineering and fit it into the space. And when you're dealing with a 40 pound locomotive, then that becomes an issue as well. I see why they call it building it from scratch though, because you spend a lot of time scratching your head trying to figure out how to do this thing. Absolutely. Now, as we mentioned in the past, the whole thing's being built out of three quarter inch furniture grade plywood, uh, mostly because of the weight of the locomotive. At any rate, let's get on to the project at hand, which is finishing up the turntable bridge here and uh, the, the mechanism that runs it. Our good friend Steve has come to our rescue on a couple of these things. He has a Black & Decker router, which will enable drilling the holes absolutely perpendicular to the, the bridge. Also, he has a lathe and he can turn down the metal parts so that they fit and align perfectly. Uh, just a quick recap here. This is that great photograph by Jerry Day showing just how narrow the turntable bridge is. The deck on top of it is quite wide, but the structure underneath is only three feet wide as the track gauge is three feet wide and you need to carry the weight of the locomotive straight down through the bridge structure. So first up we're going to drill the hole through the the base of the turntable pit using the router here which has a plunge function which allows it to be pressed down through the work and uh, functioning essentially as a drill. To ensure that it's absolutely perpendicular to the base and uh, perfectly aligned with the center, Steve has constructed this little jig here, which will mount the router in place uh, so that as he pushes down on it through the base drilling the hole, it can't possibly shift around. So he's constructed these, these little wood blocks and now he's aligning the router right squarely to the center mark. And the, all of the various cutouts have been designed around this center mark right here. And so now he has to ensure that his router is absolutely centered there and perpendicular. So these little wood blocks that he's constructed will now be used to hold the router in place so that it can't possibly shift and then he's going to push the router down through the center using it as a drill and drill out that center hole. The outside diameter of this uh, bearing is exactly 18 millimeters. And so uh, I have purchased an 18 millimeter router bit here that has uh, blades on both the side and the bottom so that it can function essentially as a drill. And so the center hole now is perfectly centered in the turntable pit and perfectly perpendicular to the base of the turntable pit here, ensuring that the bridge will be absolutely level relative to the turntable pit. We now have a second piece to drill out because the, the support structure here is two layers thick. This piece, which goes on the bottom of the turntable pit, will also function as the motor mount, uh, as well as strengthening and stiffening the center joint. Mm -hmm. 
And now to glue and screw that center section in place. Uh, in order to ensure that it's in perfect alignment, all I need to do is place my 18 millimeter center bearing uh, in the hole and then go ahead and glue and screw the base plate and motor mount uh, in place. The inside diameter of the bushing is 16 millimeters, and so Steve has turned down the inside tube on his lathe to exactly 16 millimeters so that it slides easily into the bushing and rotates freely. A quick double check here to ensure that everything is perfectly perpendicular to the base plate and uh, and it is. It's, ab it's absolutely perpendicular. The center pulley and mounting flanges have an inside diameter also of 16 millimeters and they neatly slide down onto this shaft and can be locked in place with set screws. So I've uh, set the lower flange here, which is the height adjustment, in place against the, the wood base just to ensure that everything spins freely without any kind of actual bearing at the bottom. It's just the flange uh, setting on the wood. And it seems that this is going to work out just fine. So the upper of these two flanges functions as the mount for the bridge to the center shaft. The center shaft goes all the way up through the bridge and then is locked in place with this flange. The lower flange is the height adjustment and simply rides on the bottom of the turntable pit. But it allows me to raise and lower the entire bridge making sure that it's in perfect alignment with the tracks. It's critical that the bridge be absolutely horizontal so that the alignment is the same at both ends so that as the bridge swings around I don't have a height difference between one end of the bridge and the other. And this has worked out perfectly. Both ends of the bridge are uh, in perfect alignment with the approach tracks at both ends of the bridge. I've been concerned that simply using this flange uh, as a friction bearing here might add too much friction to the whole thing, especially when there's a very heavy locomotive on the bridge. If in fact there's too much friction here, I have a ball bearing that I will be inserting here. But if I don't need it, I'm just going to let the bottom flange ride on the wood this way. I am planning to put a little tiny bit of baby powder. I use baby powder for a lot of these things. Anyway, there'll be a little baby powder in there. Okay, on to the motor drive mechanism. Uh, this particular motor is available in a lot of different gear reductions. It's a simple motor with a gearbox mounted on one end. This is a 10 RPM motor, but it's available in much faster speeds should I need that. I love these timing belts and pulleys. I use them for a lot of different things. They're available in lots of different sizes. So I've picked a fairly good sized one for the center shaft, which also has a 16 millimeter center. So it mounts right on that 16 millimeter tube. And then I've picked out a smaller pulley here for the motor so that I get further reduction from the 10 RPMs. I'm not really sure how fast I want this whole thing to move, so I've just sort of grabbed some pulleys and I'm just going to dive in and test this and see if this is too fast or too slow. And then I can change pulley sizes uh, accordingly to change the speed of the bridge. I can also buy different motors with different gearboxes. Again, this is a 10 RPM motor, but it's available in a lot of different speeds. 
So once I have all of this worked out, I will put a complete parts list in the description on the final video. But first I have to figure out just exactly what the appropriate pulley sizes and belt sizes and so on are. So next up is going to be to temporarily mount the motor and just uh, fire it up. Put 12 volts to this and see just how fast it actually turns the turntable bridge and see if I need to go faster or slower. I have several different pulleys and belts on hand so I'll just try some out and hopefully as Goldilocks said one of them will be just right. Well I'm very encouraged. That looks good. I just, I, I'm shocked. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. I'll put it that way. And hopefully everything continues uh, being uh, a pleasantly surprising experience. Right, because boy, it's, it's scary. But uh, we'll pick it up from here when we fire up the motor and test this for speed. Because uh. the other thing is I have to be able to stop it. <laughs> with the tracks perfectly aligned right and that's got me concerned so anyway we have a few things to test if you're not a subscriber to the channel please subscribe by clicking on the upcoming blue button zoink right there the blue button well we're not sure how you found this video on the internet we hope you didn't find it boring and we will see you here on tuesday right we'll see ya we'll see ya bye bye, bye.